so we are recording. Welcome back to the Project Gen X podcast. Hey, you got it right, I got it this, right time. this time. My name <laughs> is Alan Smith. I am here along with Big Dave, and we are going to tackle the. How do we put this? Uh, we're going to tackle Scott Pilgrim on this <laughs> uh, because it's more than just the movie, and um, it's also the books. And there's a video game, and there's a whole lot more to it. So, uh, yeah, um, most of you are familiar with um, the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which yeah. came out in 2010. Um, I think it was. September 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. But it, it very much feels like a Gen X movie to me. Well, that's because of all the video game references in it and stuff. <laughs> all the 8-bit stuff. Yeah, I mean... And, well, and, the, and the comic book labeling. Absolutely. I mean, this, this was very much a... <clears throat> and before we get into the movie, I want to talk about the books a little bit. Which, I've only read the first two. Yeah. Thank there, you for there, loaning those no to me. No problem. There are... I have all of them. There are six books. The first book uh, was called Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life. The second one is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is where they actually got the name of the movie. Yes. The third one is Scott Pilgrim and the Infinite Sadness. Yeah. You know, that, there, there's your Gen X reference there. Yeah. Uh, the fourth book is Scott Pilgrim Gets It Together. Number five was Scott Pilgrim vs. the Universe. And the final book was Scott Pilgrim's Finest Hour. Let's see. The first book was released in August of 2004 and the last book was released in July of 2010 like right before the movie came out yeah okay. um, and that was kind of a I found I found this book this series of books they're on Oni press um, they that was Brian Lee O'Malley wrote this and uh, he's from Canada. And that's why this is a very Canadian book, as well as the movie. They talk about that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, the the Great Frozen North. Exactly. The you know, and that's the whole thing. That like you know, Ramona Flowers is American, and they're like they yeah. act like she's like, oh, she's American. You know. It's just, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's the name Scott Pilgrim came. There was a Canadian band, it was an all female band called named Plum Tree. If you notice in the, they're on the soundtrack. Yeah, quite the, a bit. The song actually. Scott, the song Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, that's where it came from. And he in the movie, Michael Sarah is wearing a Plum Tree shirt yes. when they're performing at one point. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the song. Um, it, it's oh, come on, it's it's, not it's, that it's, bad. A, it's an indie song. It's cool. I mean, it's not a. I'm I, just. I, I there's other stuff that that I like I'm, more. I'm not gonna lie. When I because I rewatched it last night mm -hmm. in preparation for this. Yeah, I meant to rewatch it and get around to it, <laughs> but I've seen this movie so many times that he I can, can quote I it can go right thing. off of it without any problems. So it's a but it was one of those things to where I'm listening to the music and I'm like I feel like I'm listening to WRVU all yeah. over again. Well, it's which funny was our because, local rock indie station. You know, you've got from Vanderbilt. You've got Beck. You've got uh, oh, this is where I, I discovered Metric. This yes. this is you know the, the song. Um, um, Bad, uh, bad, black sheep, black sheep, black sheep, which is done by. It's actually in the movie. It's Clash done, at Dragon, Clash at Dragonhead. No, Clash at Demonhead. Clash at Demonhead. Which do you, like do you know what Clash at Demonhead? Yeah. It's an old NES game. Oh, is that what it there is? There are so many references to video games in this. Well, the whole eight bit. Yeah. Intro. Oh, I know, I know, and that's that is a huge thing. I mean, it's a yeah. So. Go back to the book. Yeah, this is because it's one of those things that you really have to start with the book in order to get to the movie. And the reason why I said, okay, so I discovered Scott Pilgrim, the, the, the books. Like I said, it's on Oni Press, and they came out one basically one a year because they're, they're in the manga style. You yeah. know where in Mount, they're they're not right to you don't read right to left like you would in a manga but but it's yeah. very much that style of they 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 weren't put out in like individual comic size stuff it's like no they're these little digest books yeah and they're each a chapter and they all have a volume volume one volume two yeah. volume three whatever so, which I, each one of those was only like a twenty minute yeah read for me. they're they're real easy reads yeah so what happened is I was listening this was back in two thousand eight. Okay. All right. So the first, I guess the fourth book had just come out. I think that's right. Something like that. And it was a situation where I was listening to a podcast back then that was called Around Comics. It was out of Chicago. And um, 
they were kind of they were big in in like the comics yeah. circle, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And one of the guys that was on there was talking about this book series that he had just that, that like the, the 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 fourth volume of this book series he was reading called Scott Pilgrim was out, and he kept saying, "I don't want to give this away." You know, he was like, "But it's one of those things that." He, he was kind of laying out the whole, like, you know, Scott Pilgrim, he's like, what, 22 or 23 years 22. old? He's 22. And he's dating this. They make a big deal right. about this. And he's dating this 17-year-old girl, and he's kind of, he's playing in a band, you know, it's Knives, Knives Chow, you know, and this and that. And and then they were, he was just like, and then something happens. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, of course, that piqued my interest. I'm like, all right. So I wound up going and buying this book. You've read the first book. I've read the first you've two. You've read the now. first two, but just the first book. Okay. Yeah. I read this thing and was just like, this is one of the greatest things I've ever read in my life. And I started suggesting it to everyone that I knew. And a lot of them went and bought the book. And I kept saying, you're going to think it's this one thing until you get about three quarters of the way into the book. And then all of a sudden it's going to turn into something. It's going to take this left turn into something completely different. And it's remarkable. And everybody who read it came back to me going, oh my God, that is one of the greatest twists i have ever seen and we're going to spoil it here because i mean we're talking about something this, that's like, this movie's been out for a while well, it's not the, the movie we're bo- talking about the, the books, books the books have been, have been out, out for a while. while but basically what happens is the first three quarters of this of scott pilgrim's precious little life is just your basic boy meets girl you know tw- disaffected 20 something who you know is not really going anywhere in life playing a band with his friends you know we've got the roommates and you know yeah plays a lot of video games and you know hangs out at the bar and blah 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 he meets ramona flowers because she in his dreams she she runs she quite literally like skate like roller skates through his dreams rollerblades rollerblades actually. through his dreams and then she's basically using a what would she a, call it a subsonic yeah whatever highway it was. which is one of those oh like, you don't have those in Canada yeah which is this weird like okay yeah whatever then come to find you know and they they kind of spark up a relationship and it's you know that whole dream thing aside it's yeah. fairly normal and then she gets to the point where like oh we're gonna start dating she's like yeah but in order to date me you have to fight my seven evil exes and it's like what okay sure whatever and then when the first battle happens all of a sudden you're like oh this is all video game logic every <laughs> bit of it this changes Everything yeah. and it became for a while like in the comics, like the the comic circles and so people who read this. That was that people talked about the Scott Pilgrim uh, twist. Yeah, that was a thing for like for well, years. Like we was like, oh, and, and it's got a twist, and we be like, is it like the Scott T- Scott Pilgrim twist, or is this like some other? Yeah, and yeah. that became like a touchstone in that yeah. in that cir- those circles for a long time because oh, I only got a buck forty. Yeah, That's exactly. For I mean, the bus. because it's one of those things that once it hits that, it's like, oh, game on. Here we go. <laughs> okay, quite literally. Yeah, and so those like, of course, you know, like I said, the first four books are out, so it was yeah. Buy the next one. Okay, buy the next one. Okay, buy the next. One. I was passing them off to people they were going and buying their own copies of this and that blah 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 and then we had to wait <laughs> but it was every- oh, oh you got you got stephen king dark tower yeah so it was one of those things that you know over the, the course of the next couple of years the the, the final books came out you yeah know, uh as well as they announced there's a movie oh edgar wright's making the movie okay this is cool then they start okay michael Sarah's playing scott pilgrim I'll admit, I was not really on board with that to begin with. I was like, uh, I would, no. I had heard about the books, right. but then somebody was like, well, you got to go see the movies. I went to see the movie. I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. And then I read the first two books, and I was like, Michael Sarah is not, not Scott Pilgrim. Not Scott no, Pilgrim. No. Now, I think they did some great casting on some of the other oh, yeah. people in this. Stephen and, Stills. Yes, I know. Kim. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, knives. Knives was knives was brilliant. Yeah, was brilliant. Um, I have a problem with. Um, I thought that uh, um, Mary um, Mary Elizabeth um, Winstead was wonderful as uh, Ramona Flowers. Yeah. However, as much and I I know you don't like her, but I do like. Um, um, Brie, was that, um, I think Brie Larson Brie in Larson. this role was actually you didn't like her. No, because the thing is, you've only read the first two. Yeah, I've only read the first. So two you books. haven't gotten to. No. you haven't gotten to Envy Adams yet because it's one of those things. She's a specter in the first 
couple of books of yeah. like they talk about oh Scott's ex girlfriend envy that like ruined you know that like yeah. you know decimated me. when she finally comes in nothing like Brie Larson oh really nothing and as a matter of fact in the movie that character is only in it a small amount of time hmm. in the books she plays a factor all the way oh. on through okay. and and it goes into some <clears throat> other places anyway. So that's where we are. Okay, so so the I'm movies. Just, so the, I've never been a big fan of Brie Larson in yeah. the movies that she's been in. I and mean, Captain Mar- Captain Marvel was. Eh. Yeah, I thought she was good in that. It, role, it was not it? bad. I, it was a popcorn movie for me. It was absolutely. Fun. I, I tell you what movie that that I really started liking her was Twenty One Jump Street. I hated that movie. I love that I movie that because movie. it because of what it's just fun. It's just so much fun. I just. Um, yeah. I'm not hating on Brie Larson. I'm right. sure she's a great actress. It's just that everything that she's been in, I haven't really dug. Right. I'm like, I get that. I mean, yeah. that's I, I, I haven't liked everything that she's in. Those, those, I like her as Captain this, Marvel, and because you know, I haven't read the rest of the books, I'm right. sure that'll change. But for right now, I'm actually okay with her okay. as Envy. So, and we'll try because it's been. It's I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've read the books, so yeah, I'm okay. kind of. I remember a lot. I remember some big differences, yeah. but I don't remember all of them. The one that struck me just from reading the first two books right. was in the books, they they make a big deal about Scott being a fighter. He's a really right. good fighter. He actually prides himself on being a good fighter. Right, right. I'll tell you one of the things that... And, and that's not really, that's not no, really a get that. plot point in the and movie. And also it's the whole Michael Sarah. It's like, I just can't buy him as a fighter. That's, no. You know, it's a... Um, one of the big things that I and a lot of other people who read the books and then saw the movie took yeah. away from it and still talk about it is that in the books, Ramona Flowers is actually a character. Whereas in the movie, she's just a plot device. Okay, I can I, see they, that. Because they really do not develop her character whatsoever. She's just there for Scott Pilgrim to go through all of this stuff. Yeah. That's all it is to it. Well, and every time he asks her about her background, she kind of... Right, and yeah. you learn a whole lot more about her in yeah. the books. And, and um, that's... Again, you're talking about six volumes yeah. that they put into one movie. Yeah. I think they could have made... They could have developed that character a little they bit They could have. More. They could have made a series out of the movies. They really could have. Yeah. Now, it wasn't... Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was not a box office success. Uh, it, it's more of a cult thing. Right. It is one of the best things I ever heard someone say about this movie. Like, after it was released. Sure. It was, uh, I forget, I think it was Wired Magazine, or Wired.com I was reading, you know. Yeah. Um, back when they were cool. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but it, they, the, the review of it, this was, this was the review. Sure. The, the, the title of the review, Scott, Bil- Scott Pilgrim versus the world is the reason that comic book lovers can't have nice things. Oh, I remember that article. <laughs> I remember that article. And that, and it, and it went on to say, this is a brilliant movie that the people who are in the know love but yeah. the rest of the world has not caught up to, and so therefore, we're not going to get any more. This it's it's yeah. not doing well. It's not going to get a sequel. It's not going to. And people should see this movie because it is great. Yeah, this is why we can't have nice things. You know, it's <laughs> well. I mean, one of the things that struck me um, after reading the first two books and then watching the movie last night mm-hmm. is they almost in in a lot of the scenes they almost used the book as a storyboard, right? For oh yeah. the movie. Oh, absolutely. Because there absolutely. were some, there are a lot of scenes that out of the movie straight out of, I that know. are straight out of the book. When they're going through the apartment, yeah, that hole where it's showing like all the like all the video games and all the stuff that's in there well, and who owns what and how much you know yeah. and all that that is straight out of the books. So. Well, even even the scene where Wallace mm-hmm. meets knives for the first time right. and he bends down and grabs her arms and goes, "You are too good for him." Right, I is know. Right I know. out of the I know. book. I know. I know. I know. Let's go through. Um, Let's go through the cast real quick. Yeah. This has got a very large cast of people who would go on to be big yeah. later. Do 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 the person and do the person okay. they, they were. So we have Michael Sarah plays Scott Pilgrim. Yes. Mary Elizabeth Winstead plays Ramona Flowers. Yes. Okay, prior to this, probably the biggest thing that she was in was Live Free or Die Hard. So she played the she played his daughter. Oh, that's right. I and had she forgotten was, about now, that. Now, prior to that, she was in Death Proof. 
Oh, she's the cheerleader. Yeah. She's the actress that's dressed like the cheerleader. Like you only see her for just a little bit of time, but it's yeah, one of those yeah. things that whenever I first heard, they're like, "Oh, she's gonna play Ramona Flowers." I was like, "Yes, yes, so let her play Ramona Flowers." I'm all for this. Okay, so Wallace Wells, who is Scott's gay roommate, because yes. they make a big deal about that in the books and the movie. In the movie, uh, it's played by Kieran Culkin. Yeah, Scott's sister Stacy is Anna Kendrick. Mm -hmm. This is one of the first times a lot of us saw Anna Kendrick. Yep. Um, His, uh, see, Kim Pine, who plays the drummer in Sex Oh, his band's name is Sex Bob-omb. Yes. Okay, there you go. Another video game reference because of the Bob-omb's from Nintendo, you know, from uh, Super Mario Brothers. Allison Pill, who has been in a bunch, she was on the the newsroom. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, on different, okay. Is that Julie? She was the love interest, uh, the the one that oh man, it's been so long since I've, I've watched that show. That was such a good show. Was it? Was she one of the evil exes? No, no, no. She was the drummer. Uh, she Kim played, Kim Pine. Kim, yeah, okay, she played okay, the, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Julie Powers is not an equal is not an evil ex. She works in the coffee shop where, but, but well, that's Aubrey Plaza. The, the uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, but she's the record store. She's the right. coffee shop. Right, right, she's, right. She basically works at every business that Scott Pilgrim pretty much, walks pretty into. Much. Gideon Graves, who is the ultimate evil ex. Yeah, Jason Schwartzman. Yep. Okay. Um, and with a last name like Schwartzman, how could you not be the ultimate bad guy? Knives Child, Ellen Wong. Yeah. Uh, who has been? Let's see. She was. I'm trying to remember what all she's been in. She's been in a bunch of stuff since then. Uh, oh, she was in um, uh, uh, she was in the X Men movie um, Days of Future Past. I know um, the one that was set in the '80s um, was that Age of Apocalypse. She played Jubilee. She's only in it for a small amount of time. Oh, that was that. No, that's Days of Future Past. Is that no, no? Uh-huh. It's it's um, po- uh, Age of Apocalypse. That's set in the 1980s. Um, yeah, because Days of Future Past is in the 70s. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Ellen Wong. She's been in a bunch of others. I think she was in, uh, wasn't she in um, The Deadly Class also? Oh. Was she? Hold on, hold on. You know See, what? I can look her up right here. Yeah, that's actually. Oh, she's in Glow. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen I forgot, that's right. Glow. She's in that. Um, I can't believe you brought up Deadly Class because it's is like. She in The Deadly Class? It has disappeared. Maybe she's not. That oh, show. It's, that show, it, it got canceled, you know. No, I'm wrong. She wasn't in the Deadly Class. I'm I don't sorry. know why that show got canceled because that show was awesome. Yeah, and it's even disappeared off of Sci-Fi. Oh, really? You you can't even watch it on the Sci-Fi Channel app anymore. I'm going through. I'm not doing everybody in and this. It, and if you didn't download the soundtrack on Spotify, I, oh, I know, I know. Oh, that. such a great soundtrack. Okay, so you get into some like the smaller. Okay. Yeah. There was a uh, one of her evil exes is Lucas Lee, who is this big like. You know, he's like a skateboarder yeah. who turns into a movie star. Chris Evans. It's Chris Evans. <laughs> Before, this is pre... Do you really think you're going to yeah. goad me into doing that? This this is pre, you I, know, I Captain America. Watching. Yeah. Um, Bored. Of course, Brie Larson played yeah. Andy Adams. Um, oh, you had the guy that played Hold on, Superman. hold on, hold on, we're getting there, um, yeah. Um, it's Brandon Routh, plays Todd yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays Envy's boyfriend. Vegan. vegan. Super vegan. Okay, there, there's more to that, okay? <laughs> uh, Mae Whitman plays Roxy, who is one of her... Also, we, we find out she had a sexy... As Scott keeps putting in a sexy phase. Yeah. Uh, Mae Whitman plays one, plays Roxy, one of her exes. Brennan Routh. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see who else was in this... Uh, Bill Hader was in it. Bill, uh, Bill, yep. Bill Hader. Now one of the wait who was he plays? Who did Bill Hader. I can't believe I missed he's, that. He's the voice. Finish him. You know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, That's all Bill Hader. Okay. Okay. Um, now one an uncredited. Yeah. Um, when the vegan police show up. Yeah. It's um um uh, the guy that played the Punisher. Um. Which Punisher? The 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 in the Punish like the one with John Travolta. Um, oh, um, um, it, Thomas Tom Thomas Jane Thomas Jane it's Thomas Jane and he's uncredited of like he shows up. I you can't know? believe it's, I missed that. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it is. It, it's one of those where it's like, oh, it's that per. Oh, it's that person. Oh, it's that. <laughs> and they all went on to like do or or you know type do stuff. other stuff. Yeah, and um, which. which Oh, um, Altered Carbon on Netflix. It's yes. a Netflix original. Thomas Jane is in that. Right, right. If you haven't seen that, you really need to watch it. Thomas Jane is one of those actors that, like, 
you know, he obviously he was known for a lot. Of course, he was in um, you know the, the Punisher movie. Um, he but it was, what was really cool about okay, here's the thing about Thomas Jane. He did that Punisher movie, yeah. okay, and he wanted to come back to do more. Oh yeah, you know, like he was going to be in Punisher War Zone, and something happened, and he wound up not doing it. But he did. There were a couple of uh, video games. He did. He did the voice for yeah for, as the Punisher as well as not just Punisher games but like Marvel games. He did that stuff yeah. And then there was a a short that was done. It's on YouTube. It's called Dirty Laundry. That it's the Punisher, but they never say it's the Punisher. Okay. And Thomas Jane plays that character again. Uh, it's like seven or eight minutes long, or I'm something gonna, like that. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy that. I movie. do. Yeah, it, I want to know. It's, it's a, a it's a fun popcorn. Movie. Uh, I I have my problems with that movie. Well, there's problems with the movie but because he's too nice. Now I like the the John Berenthal oh, Punisher yeah. a whole the lot Netflix more. Original. Yeah, no, he um, that's more that, true. That is the he to the is Punisher. Frank Castle. Yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, but Thomas Jane, you know, of course, did uh, he was in um, the Mist. Yeah. You know, he's been in a lot of stuff. Now, did you ever see Hong? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. It was a show that was on HBO. Well, there's your, there's your first problem. Yeah. Oh, no, it was a good show. I, it was I, a real good show. I don't have HBO. Well, yeah. I can't afford it. It was a real good show, but it was only on like two seasons or something. Yeah. And the whole thing, he was he was a a, a middle-aged you know PE teacher that like he was a... Yeah up and coming sports star that didn't quite make it, you know, and he's divorced and, you know, got a couple of kids and that kind of stuff. But the reason it's called hung is because he's well endowed. Oh no. And he becomes a gigolo basically. You oh, know, to, no. yeah. And dude, it is a great show. I mean, it's a great show, but it was only on like two seasons, you know? Um, and, uh, but I have always liked Thomas Jane. I mean, yeah. he's been a lot of stuff over the years. Anyway, um, back to, back to Scott, back to Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. In the lead up to the movie, I mean, I was really excited about this movie. Yeah, really excited about it, and I, I, I was not disappointed in this movie at all. You know, there there's a few things like I said they could have developed Ramona a little yeah. more. They could have, I think they could have cast Envy a little better. But okay, uh, but it's one of those things. I'm like, I'm fine with it because they hit all the marks that they needed to for me to enjoy this movie. Sure, it is one of those movies that over the years I have told people you need to watch this. Well, what is it? Just sit down and watch it. Yeah. It's going to start off as one thing and then it's going to wind up somewhere else. Just, you know, and within reason, most people have enjoyed it. You know, there are a couple of times people are like, I hate that movie. I'm like, well, I, we're not friends now. But <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things that, you know, that uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's that whole. So that's of, the hill you're going to yeah, die on. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's 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 what it comes down to. But but no, it's um the soundtrack once again. Oh, you know, well, the major a lot of it's written by Beck. Yes, Beck, with you know. with with the actual actors, right? You know, Michael Michael Sarah actually plays bass, right? So you know, he's actually playing the bass in there. The other two actors, well, the other three actors, because mm-hmm. young Neil eventually comes oh, in yeah, to play yeah, bass. Yeah. <laughs> they all had to learn their instruments, right? And but they're actually playing their instruments, you know, mm-hmm. for the movie. And I really, it was one of those things of. Because I had read this, of course, you know, you, when you read something that has a, a fictitious band in it, you kind of make up what you think they sound like yeah. in your head. And I was not just dis- like, they didn't sound exactly the way I imagined, but I'm like, no, that works. Yeah. That that works the, quite The a fact bit. that they're yeah. coming out as kind of that heavy fuzz that, noise band. Yeah, that, that very indie rock, yeah. you know, I, I, I get that. Um, let, let's talk, let's get into the movie a little bit now and talk about it. Um this, like I said, um, uh, Edgar Wright yeah. did this perfect. I mean, and it was one of those things that not only when when he was was hired to direct this movie, it was one of those things you could tell he really enjoyed because, like, his Twitter account at the time, he would just every once in a while drop photos from the set, <laughs> or or it would be like, "Hey, we cast." Like, I remember very vividly, it was like, "Hey, we we cast." Um, uh, Knives Chow, you know, it was Ellen Wong. Yeah. And the picture that he put out there was her, but she had a copy of the book and had it up to where you couldn't see anything except for her eyes, yeah. you know, type stuff. So it was one of those like, oh, they're they're really like playing this coy like all the way through. And he would just drop these little here and there. Easter eggs. Yeah. And so, so it was one of those things, like I said, metric, because it was one of those things when they first talked about 
the soundtrack because they it was a couple of months out yeah. that they started talking about the soundtrack and and they actually released the song Black Sheep to a YouTube or something you know to where it was like okay I went and listened to it I was like I, who is this band I really like this and I wound up becoming a fan of Metric yeah. over the, the Which, little after that because I was like these guys are amazing I still need you to, to give you all I thought I gave you that stuff no I you, thought I did so. you gave me all the De La, uh, De La Soul I stuff it, anyways, that I couldn't find I thought it was Metric I but, it, but I, I, the first time I heard the song where it starts off and it's like yeah, heavy doom, right doom, 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 I know doom, I know doom, and it builds, builds up, and, builds. and all of a sudden it goes into like this little sing songy pop in thing. the middle. And I'm it's like, great. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? That's I know. a twist. <laughs> I know. And uh, and that again, Brie Larson actually performs that in the movie. It's yeah. not Metric doing it. You know, it's not uh, Emily. It's 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 Brie Larson. And I'll be honest, I don't like it that much. No, I mean, it's the Metric's much better. Now I will say this. And it, it translates pretty well to home. Like if you got, a, especially if you got a good home stereo system. Yeah. But especially in a the theater, when they started playing that song, yeah, they did a wonderful job of capturing what a live performance feels and sounds like. Yeah. Of, I mean, it was just like, whoa, they they really got this, you know? Okay, yeah, all there, right, we're all, down with this. There's you know? only one other movie that I can think of that almost does famous. almost famous with Fever Dog. I Fever know. Dog they walks out on perfect. stage. It's like when Stillwater walks out and it starts doing Fever Dog. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, this is how it feels to be in a concert. Yeah, you know? it's like, um, but yeah, Which, they they did a really good job on that. I, so. I'm in the middle of upgrading my sound system here at the house. I just ordered some some new speakers. <laughs> Is that why you sent me that link earlier? Today? Well, one, I followed that company on Facebook. Oh yeah, <laughs> and when I saw their their scratch and dent sale come up, it oh, was yeah. like eighty percent off. Oh yeah, I, no. I went over and looked at it, and they had a pair of their reference speakers for like sixty bucks. Yeah, free shipping. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, considering the woofer on one of my mains is blown right, right. now, right? I'm buying those. Yeah. And like I said, they're normally like three hundred dollars. Yeah, I appreciate you sending me that, but I just don't have the money for it right now. <laughs> I was like, eh, I wish I had some money because this is some nice stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so um, they do. And you were talking about also some of the stuff from the book that they translate into the movie. Yeah, yeah, like the whole the Aubrey Plaza. Okay, and it's like she she cusses like in the in the movie yeah. and like all of a sudden and in the book it's the same way where like this little black bar comes over her mouth how are you doing and that he with keeps your mouth like, how do you do that you know she's like what are you talking about you just <laughs> <laughs> there's that little stuff where it's like from the beginning you know that this is not the real world like there's yeah. there's there's some other little stuff that's going on here you know <laughs> uh the funny little uh, another one you know that's uh, one of the jokes from the book that, that's in that's in the thing is you know uh when he's going around asking about this girl, you know, like, yeah. does anybody know who she is? Yeah, you know, she, uh, she, uh, she works for Amazon. He's like, what's, what's the web address? What, what's the website name for Amazon? <laughs> it's like, what, what's, what's the web address for Amazon.ca? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazon.ca. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah. But it's, it, <laughs> oh, this, this computer's telling me I have mail. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> I know. It's all kinds of stuff like it where it's like, uh, one of my friends that I turned on to this book, especially as the series was over. Yeah. We were talking about it, you know, we were like, man, it's so good. It's my, my, my buddy Mike, you know, and Mike was like, I really think that Scott Pilgrim has like, uh, that the character of Scott Pilgrim is like mentally deranged. Like he has mental issues, like mental health issues. That's yeah. why he acts the way he does and the way that he, why he sees things the way that he does and no one else sees them like that. Like he's delusional. <laughs> and I'm like... I didn't read it that way, but I see exactly where I you're coming see where from. You're going you know, from. that's uh, yeah, he's got some kind of brain damage or something. You know, it's a- or just a little <laughs> mental health issue yeah, where he, his world's a little off kilter and mm-hmm. he sees it in a completely different mm-hmm. way. But like I said, I know I do so much, <laughs> especially in these first couple of books here. Yeah, that you read, you saw a lot of it in the movie. Oh, you know, I mean, it's like a lot of it could have been storyboard. For I know. The movie. And I mean, like there, I mean, there is very specifically stuff that happens yeah. in his first couple of books that, and that's part of the problem is that the, the last half of the movie is really rushed because they're trying to get through like four more chapters of the story. Yeah. And I don't, and that's again, goes back to the whole NB Adams. Okay. We keep talking about NB Adams in this. Okay. And she is Scott's ex. They were they dated in college. Yeah. 
I think they played in a band together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, with and Kim. With Kim, that's right. And then... Actually, he met MV first. Right. And, and he dated Kim and, and after they were, that. And yeah. they were trying to get the band... They're trying right. To get, and then he discovered Kim, who right. Kim actually had a crush on him. Right. And he found out that she played drums in the school band, and that's how they got her. Right. And then Envy decided she was going to go solo, basically. Yeah. yeah and, and, and move to another town. Yeah. And then she blew up. And, like, she got a record deal and yeah. started, you know. So it's just, this is a specter of this ex that is, you know, and then they find out, oh, they're coming to town. The demon, yeah. the clash at Demon Head, which, again, is a, it's a, it's a video it's, game. It's reference. a video game reference. <clears throat> and so in the books, there is this real she comes back and even though he's with Ramona and only wants to be with Ramona she's still wreaking havoc on his life a lot more than what you see because really let's be honest that character is only in a handful of scenes like there's a little there's, right in the middle she shows up at the record shop and then they go to well, no a poster of her shows up at the well, record shop but then she's Walks out of the poster. Basically, she is the poster. Well, remember, but that's after the phone call. Yeah, that's you right. Get, that's right. Get, she call, get, that's right. That's right. You get right. the phone call where right. she lets him know he's coming to town, right. and she wants his band to open up. Right, right. And she's like, "Well, just come by the club, and you know, we'll right. see." But it's one of those things that she shows up, and then in the record store, then the record there's store poster, and, and then, then all of a sudden she's there, and then it's the they're at the club. Yeah, and it's the. <laughs> I still love the whole fact that Knives is um, loves the Clash at Demon Head, like yeah. loves them, you know. And so it's one of those things. She's so excited to to meet them, yeah. And the only thing she can come up with is I've kissed the lips that you've kissed, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a thing in the book too. Like you know, it just well, like the whole, <laughs> the whole thing when they're walking to the green room, yeah. where somebody goes, "Oh yeah, he used to date Envy," right? And she does that whole surprise face but mm-hmm. it's it's in 8 bit comic mm-hmm. comic mm-hmm. video you know yeah Doom. knives is also uh, uh fleshed out a lot more in yeah. the the books um especially going forward because it's one of those things well, that they're get, really kind of mean to her in the movie especially you actually get to see how she met scott right in the books but in the in the movie they're really kind of mean to her yeah and you know in a lot cuz it's one of those things is like that whole thing with them dance doing the dance dance revolution fight yeah. is not in the books no. at all. Uh, I think they created it for so they could have that sequence, but also to give her something else to do because it's this whole thing is like they're dating and she she obviously is in love with him and yeah. he's just there because he's something to do in between girlfriends. Then he meets Ramona. And then a simple prop right. to occupy his yeah, time. Pretty much, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so it's one of those things where they they they're you know it's this whole contentious yeah. thing between Ramona and Knives. And in the books, it's one of those things where later on, because that, that, that another thing, it's really a big deal that she's only seventeen. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and so it's one of those things that I think it's in the final book. You know, and everything's kind of gone to hell. You know, like he's not with anybody because of everything that's happened. And Knives shows up, and all of a sudden, it's like when she walks into frame, it's Knives, but it's like she's all shiny and like this whole new look and everything. I mean, it's like it's her, but it's like this much more glamorous version of her. She leveled up. No, she's 18. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, she leveled yeah. up. And it's one of those things when she walks in and it's like, and nothing is said. And he looks at her and he's like, Oh my God, you're 18. <laughs> you know, it's that type of thing. And also her and young Neil, Yes, wind up together in the books. Yes, um, which I can't. That doesn't have. Does that? Yes, have, that has. Okay, because there's she, more to it though decides, in the books. So she decides that she's going to make Scott jealous oh. by going after Young Neil, and she and Young Neil end up together. There's a joke in in the books where they're out at dinner, and you know she's 18 or whatever, and um, I don't think it's Young Neil. I think it's actually um, who who later becomes just. Neil, yeah, as Scott deems right, it. Right, right, right. Uh, you know what? It's been a while since I read. I can't remember. I think Young Neil actually turns out to be gay in the books. He winds up with Wallace. Okay, and it's who's the other band member? Um, 
It was Stephen Kim and Scott. I guess it was Stephen Stills then. Is uh Stephen Stills winds up with knives. That's what it is at at later. Okay. And, uh, I think that's what it happens. It, I might I might have my characters mixed up, but it's funny because they're they're at they're at dinner, they're in a restaurant, and um Stephen Stills keeps giving knives alcohol. And it's funny, and they're like, man, stop doing that. And he's like, no, it's funny to give the 18-year-old alcohol. And then there's this little note, it's like, don't give 18-year-olds alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> but poor Kim. Does yeah, Kim and then ever- Kim, I, I, seem, I, 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 need to, I, I really wish I'd gone back and read these. Um, that's a lot of reading to do. In, I, I need the next two, time. by the way. Okay. And, uh, but it's one of those things where, I, again, it goes into, you, you get that, you get you get some of, of Scott's comeuppance in the movie, yeah. Where um, you know he has to kind of confront Envy and and Kim and and yeah. and all this stuff. But in the books, there's really a lot of comeuppance of them like, "Hey, look, you just treated me like crap." Yeah, you know, type stuff. And Knives even gets at him, you know, and and, and I always felt bad for Kim. Yeah, because I mean, it's one. I have a thing for redheads. Yeah. Two, she's a drummer. Yeah. Three, you can tell that she's really still in love with Scott. Well, she's pissed at him now. But she's I mean that, angry. No. Well, she's she loves him, but she's angry. Well, you know, with and him. it's also one of those things like his reaction when they say, "Well, what about Kim?" Is like, well, "Well, she had freckles." Like that's his only explanation for why they broke up. Dude, you know, it was like <laughs> redheaded and freckled. That's a unicorn. You need to date but that. It, every but it was time. just one of those things where, like, that was his whole excuse. It was like she had freckles. And it was yeah. like hey, you're you're an ass. You know, okay, you're it's, you're <laughs> you're very shallow, right? And that's the whole thing, especially the the character of Scott Pilgrim in the books. You get some depth with him yeah. by the time it's over. You never get that in the movie. Yeah. Whatsoever. He he's just shallow. I mean, you know, even with the so-called happy ending, you know, but it's still one yeah. of those things where it's like, no, the, the, you're still like a terrible person. This is, yeah. you know, and that's one of the things I love because, you know, like I said, he has some growth in the books and everything, but it's still one of those things where like, no, he's still a terrible person. That That's what this comes down to is that, you know, he, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I kind of like that because it's it's not your typical, oh, we have this hero's journey or this whatever, you know, or this redemption story type stuff. Yeah, it's like, there's no redemption. No, there really isn't. He, because then, he, he's a shallow idiot. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's thinking about me right now. Now, I'll tell you who is the 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 star in both the book and the movie is Wallace. Wallace has depth to it. Wallace is, I mean, he's he, he's, al- he's almost trying to be Scott's conscience. Yeah, in a lot of ways. I mean, because again, he, with al- the whole "you were better than he, him, he is," you know, it's, he it's, is almost Scott's Jiminy Cricket. Uh-huh. Very and he, and he friendly, keeps, van, flamboyant, stealing and, Scott's girl or Scott's sister's boyfriends. boyfriends, and that happens multiple times. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's hilarious, you know. It's <laughs> that's just, Wallace. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's such a great character, you know. I mean, it does just, he have glasses? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is so man. It's such a good and again, mm. you get these characters, you know, like you yeah. have Wallace, who is gay, but he's not the gay best friend or the gay whatever. It's like they mention that he's gay, but that's it. It's yeah. just like no, it's like hey, that's just one thing about this character. There's so much more going on there, yeah. and it is one of those things where he is kind of the wise. Like, again, the Jiminy well, Cricket of the conscious, well, you know, of like he's you're going to screw this up. You know, you're going to screw this up. He's you know? the Jiminy Cricket, but at the same time, he's he's trying to keep he's trying to be Scott's conscious, but mm-hmm. at the same time, he's also his antagonist. Oh, absolutely, he's very absolutely. much Scott's absolutely antagonist. Um, I'm trying to, and he's kind of half rooting for him and half rooting against. I know, him. I know. And there's that. Um, when we get to Gideon. I think that Jason Schwartzman was a good uh, uh, casting choice in this. See, I haven't gotten that far in the book yet. Yeah, uh, but it's yeah because he comes into it later. Yeah. Um. And but it's one of those things that I mean he just he, he's good playing that slimy record exec. Like you I know, said, I know with, that, with a last name like Schwartzman, yeah, how can you yeah. not be a bad guy? But I mean, he was, you know, he's, I'm you sorry, know, I, know. every time I hear his last name, I think of Spaceballs. Oh, yeah, yeah. the Schwartz. The Schwartz. But, you know, that's, you, you know, of course, you remember him from Rushmore and, oh, you yeah. know, all those those movies, you know, he he, he made he really made his name in those Wes Anderson movies, yeah. you know, and um, as well as some other stuff. 
but he uh, he he did a really good job as Gideon. I thought, uh, even though again they didn't they didn't really give him as, get, give him enough, him. you know, and uh, they um, didn't flesh him out. Again. No, you know, and the front half of the movie they kind of fleshed people out. And the then, back half like of the I said, movie, the back half of this movie is just a rush to it get was to like, the finish. Okay, this is building. This right. is great. This is oh, what do you mean we got to finish this? Oh crap! And, you know, okay. and I think some of it has to do with the fact that, like I said, the final book in this series yeah. didn't come out until like a month before the movie came out. And I think that might've had something to do with that. Brian Lee O'Malley helped through all of yeah. it of like, he was writing it, but it was still one of those things, you know, they had a script before that book was complete. Oh yeah. To that they were working That's probably on, why so. the last book took so long to come out yeah. is because he was probably writing the screen. Well, but it didn't, I mean, it, it came out on a fairly regular, you know, yeah. like I do remember them announcing that there was going to be a delay with the final book because yeah. because of the movie. They didn't want it to come out too far in advance of the movie. They wanted it to yeah. kind of come out, not really simultaneously, I, but somewhere close. I would really love to see a production company pick this up and do like a Netflix original series. Yes. this would Or, you know, or like a prime original series. Maybe not even a series, but a mini series, like a, a limited series yeah. would be great for this. Like, you know, how HBO has done several, like, you know, um, uh, like Chernobyl yeah. or... Um, no, that, that was... That was, no, that was HBO. That was HBO, yeah. Or uh, um, Sharp Objects or something like that, where yeah. it's these... No, we can tell this in six or eight, Yeah, and that's all. We don't have to come back. I think it would be wonderful for something like that. Yeah. Um, the um, I was telling you, one of the thing because you know this is such a video game, yeah, you know movie and, and book series that there was a video game that was released. It was a digital only game. Okay. Oh, for Scott Pilgrim. For Scott yeah. Pilgrim versus what was the it, world. PS3. It was on the PS3 and the X. Hold on, let me pull this up because I've got it here. Xbox 360. It came I think out. You it said. was that era. This is ten years ago when this came yeah, out. Okay. You know, and it was one of those things that. Let's see. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, a video game adaptation built. Ubisoft made it. It was for the PlayStation Network. And then also so it was the Xbox Live. It was a Live. digital download. It was a digital. It was di- you can. There is not a disc of this anywhere. The only way you could get it was through their their store. You know, like either through PS3 nah, or the Xbox 360. I hate that. And so here, ten years later, unless you downloaded that onto a an old system that you still have laying around somewhere, you yeah. cannot play this game. Because the the rights, all the rights on this thing, the music, the likenesses, all that kind of stuff, have reverted by now, and so they can't. You're not going to see unless unless they go back and pay, you know, pay the rights on this. Yeah. You're not going to get it on a, you know, any of other those services, which sucks because it was actually a pretty fun side-scrolling video game. Yeah. Uh, and it also has a soundtrack, which you can actually get, still get the soundtrack to the to the um, the video game. Okay. It's all eight bit, you know, type stuff and everything. Oh, I think I had probably probably on there. Um, yeah, Brian LeBarton did an eight bit version yeah. of Threshold. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and that's one of those because, like I said, it was a fun game. It was hard. I mean, it was. I mean, it really goes back was to it like, like a Street Fighter type, kind of like a uh, kind of. It was more of like a Streets of Rage or a uh, a Double Dragon, oh, where it was that type, yeah. you know, rather than just the like the one on one fighting. It was oh, you're fighting through these levels, or, yeah. or the the uh, the arcade, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade, yeah, you know, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, where yeah, it's yeah, left yeah. to right, you know, your enemies walk in, you're fighting them, and you move on to the next part. You yeah, know? Um, I had it, and I I don't have it any longer. I don't have a 360. I had one at the time, and I know yeah. I had bought it, downloaded it. And played it for a while, and I don't have it any longer, and I don't remember how to. I think the you could still maybe go get it. If, I wonder if there's I don't an know. emulator out there. Somewhere. There probably is. I don't know though, but I mean, it's if you know about the emulator, yeah. folks, please let us know. Um, Brian Lee O'Malley did a book four or five years ago, maybe six years ago, called Seconds. S e c o like seconds, you know. Yeah. That. Very much in the same style. Okay. And if I'm not mis- <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, Scott and Ramona are in the book, like in a panel. Okay. 
because it is and like I haven't read it, and I'm almost positive it is because I had, I had passed it on. All right, my my friend Maeve really got into this when it, it came out. You know, her and I were a thing at the time, and she really got into it. Like, really got into all this stuff. Okay, and uh, and when that came out, I told her you need to go pick this up. You know, and she did, and and I remember her like, oh my god, you know, I, blah, blah blah. And it's one of those where it's like obviously it's set in the same world, but. It's none of the characters that you know, and basically it's about a restaurant. Is that's the whole second, you know? Yeah. And uh, there's a what do they call it? It's a restaurant spirit or something like that. You know, there it, it's this whole typical Brian Lee O'Malley, like where it's like you think it's one thing and then it turns out to be something else. You know, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But I, I would highly suggest picking that book up as well and reading I, it. I gotta so, finish this. Yeah, that's first. fine. I, that's, yeah. I've got it at home. It's you know, it's it's sitting on my bookshelf with some other you know with graphic your, novels your and stuff that Funko i've got yeah. pop yeah okay that's another thing they put out fungo pops of this yeah um i only ever found ramona and knives and one of the scott pilgrim there was two different scott pilgrim yeah funko pops one of them he's got the base and the other one i can't remember but it, and they also did one i think they did one of kim and of of uh, Stephen Steele as well. You know, it was one of those things where... I wouldn't you know, mind having one of the Kims just because well, I'm a drummer. Those are all hard to find now. Yeah, I'm Because sure. it's one of those things. You know, Funko Pops are, are great, but whenever they go, they leave, yeah. they, they become really expensive and, on the secondary market. And so. like I have room to well, collect yeah, I know, any more I know, junk. I know, I'm the same way. And, and yeah. I keep buying the damn things on well, top of it all. So. Yeah, we, when we moved, we went from 3,200 square foot mm-hmm. to 1,200 square foot. And I'm still trying to figure out where to unpack the stuff we haven't even unpacked right. like five years later. But that's the whole thing with this is that, again, we're 10 years beyond the movie, yeah. 10 years beyond the end of the books. And it's one of those things I would love for... Brian Lee O'Malley to go back to this world for something, whether it's, you know, it's, it's just one graphic novel or it's, you know, yeah. a, a new series or whatever. Show them, show them later what happened. Yeah. You know, did, did Scott and Ramona make it is, or it, you know, he finally get together? Is he an investment banker now or something? I don't know, you know, kind of that whole, and he gets sucked back into whatever, you know, I don't know something. I would love to see it. I don't see him being, you know, I, I'm just, banker. I'm just yeah. putting that out there as a, but it's one of those things where, I, I could see him being one of those pretentious music store employees. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe he's maybe he's running a record. Maybe it's high fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> so he's basically become high fidelity now. You know. <laughs> wow. That okay. <laughs> Or explore the world. Like I said, you know, when yeah. Seconds came out where it's, okay, this happens in this world. Yeah. You know, uh, we're not going to really see those characters except for maybe Cameo where they walk through. Oh, they're, they're eating at this restaurant. They're, yeah. you know, whatever. I'm fine with that. Sure. I love to see that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it is one of those things that as time has gone on, and especially when we, when I, we first started discussing doing this, I was really excited to get back into this world again. Of oh. Like, oh, it's been so long and I loved this so much. And, I, and like I said, I've seen the movie countless times, but I need to go back and reread those books yeah. because it has been 10 years since I've read them. Well, and I know I've got them now. I, I, gave, I've got you back, all, I gave you yeah. back one and two. I need three and four. And I've got the rest of them at home. So, uh, but I just, uh, you know, the Funko Pops outside of that, I don't yeah. really think there's any other merchandise except maybe some shirts or something, yeah. you know? And that's kind of one of those, I'm like, man, I think they could have really done something with this yeah it had enough of a cult following that i think they really could have done something but they just they never did so. it, especially if they could put out like some funko pops that look like they're eight bit oh yeah like like build them good, so they're yeah. like because they've done that they've done that with other ones you know they've, they've yeah. done those with uh what was it uh, the stranger things yeah eight bit you know they've, they've done some eight bit on that as well as ninja turtles and a few other things yeah so. like if you do like a an eight bit version of the scott pilgrim cast mm-hmm that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I, don't, I would. I'd buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would. So anyway, uh, yeah, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It is a. If you have not seen it, it is a good movie. It really is. It's a watch, lot of fun. Watch the movie before you read the book. Yeah, it's. You definitely need to. This is one of those situations where you need to watch the movie first, because you will enjoy the movie a lot more. If you yeah, watch watch it before you read the books. maybe I don't know I mean because I I do I do remember people being some people being disappointed with the movie Be, yeah. again because you've only got 
you know, a couple hours to, to flesh out this world, and it's hard to do, especially well, when you front end it, load it the way that they did, you know? Watch the movie, read the books, then go, the second you finish reading the books, go back and watch the movie again, mm -hmm. because you're going to catch a lot of stuff. Oh, absolutely. In the movie, oh, from the books. No, this this movie yeah. is one of those movies you have to watch multiple times oh, in yeah. order to really catch what's going on a lot of stuff in the background and, and yeah. everything because there are so many easter eggs in this thing it's not even funny gelato's so. not vegan yeah <laughs> dude the whole vegan police <laughs> thing was so good that that and, and being that, vegan really makes you better than I everybody know. else <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like you can oh. read minds I'm vegan everyone can read minds <laughs> It's like, I know those people. I know those mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And it's funny. And that's the whole thing. You got the Punisher. You got Superman. You got Captain America. Yeah. Uh, you've got Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> all these people, they're like, okay. <laughs> the Marvel Universe runs through Scott well, yeah, Pilgrim. Yeah, in a lot of ways, you know. And, and, so. <laughs> and just the fact that, you know, Scott Pilgrim's playing that old Rickenbacker bass. Oh, I know. And then Todd shows up with oh, that, like, brand new music I man. I know, I know, I know. And it's just like. But yeah, that go and check out the soundtrack too. It's really good. Uh, Frank Black, uh, Beck. You got Metric. Oh, hold you've on. Got, um, uh, let's see here. I've, I've actually got the list here. You've got Plum you Tree. You actually have some songs by the actors as Sex Bomb. Right. Um, and, and the Sex Bomb songs are great. I, I, I absolutely yeah. love them. You, you've got Plum Tree. You've got um, Dan the Automator did the songs for Ninja Ninja Revolution. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, Ninja, that's another, they, they called it Ninja Ninja Revolution. Yeah, so. You've got Garbage Truck was written by Beck, but it was performed by the actors. Right. Um, you've got Brendan Canning as social uh, Broken Social Scene pre uh, presents Brendan mm -hmm. Cannell, which would be like Crash and the Boys. Right. Crash and the Boys. Another video game, Crash and the Boys. <laughs> uh, and I but love that. that this song, song is called I Am So, So Sad. <laughs> I, I am sad and very, very, very... <laughs> I am so sad. I am so very, very sad. <laughs> and it's like, one, two, three, four. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it's not a race, boys. Mm -hmm. This guy is for this song is for the guy in the balcony that keeps shouting. Yeah. <laughs> it's called I Hate You and I Hope You Die. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> I know. That's and that's perfect for that indie rock, Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh Frank Black. Yeah, Frank Black did um, the Ramona. Black Lips does oh Katrina. Oh, uh, the Stones are on there also. The Stones under, under, my, under my thumb. Which that was the one that I was like, this is a little too on the nose. This this now, I thought it was perfect because Gideon is so I know that, but that, that was so slick. But that was produced. that song when yeah. it where it comes in, I was like, This is a little bit too on the nose yeah, for me. You've got Beachwood Sparks, um, of course, once again, broken social scene. Uh we hate you, please die. Yeah. Um <laughs> I am so sad, so very, very sad. So which very, is what very we just sad. Talked yeah. About Dan the Animator uh, with Slick Patel song, uh, T Rex with T. Yeah, that's Teenage right. Dream. Teenage Dream is on. I forgot T Rex. It's yeah. Like, so it's a good. It's a good mix of like you, indie and and like classic rock. Yeah. You know, you got a couple of that kind of stuff. You actually but, have the Seinfeld theme. Yeah, it does. It does pop up at one point. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, the the bass line. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Black Sheep was performed by Metric and Brie Larson. Well, on the soundtrack, yeah. it's Metric, but in the movie, it's Brie Larson. Yeah, the um, singing. So, you've got the Final Fantasy II battles uh, baseline. It's actually Michael Sarah playing. Right. It. Um, you've got Ramona doing. Uh, you got Beck does both the Ramonas. Right. Right. Um, you've got Flying Burrito Brothers is on here called To Ramona, which was actually written by Dylan. Right. Uh, Eddie Cochran, Nervous Breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you've got the Blue Tones on here. You've got Blood Red Shoes on here. I think you've got an extended version of it. There's stuff that's actually in the movie as opposed to what's on the soundtrack. Yeah. So, but it's, you, it's a good you've got a You've got a band in here that I can't actually say the, the name to. <laughs> um, Fair enough. You, you've got... Um, You've got Death from Above, 1979. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. So yeah, there is. There, it's a good soundtrack. It's a good movie. Yeah. And it is a great series 
of graphic novels. And I say graphic novels because that's how they came out. They are in manga. novel size and manga style. novel style. And um, he's 23 years old. That's what it is, not 22. So uh, In the movie, they make a point that it's 22 well, years old. In the because, books, it's 23. Because you know. Kim goes, what are you, like 30? Yeah, yeah I know. I'm 22. Yeah. I'm, I'm 22. Yeah. So it's it's a... It's fun because it it really does kind of poke fun at that time in your life when you think you're doing important stuff and you're really not. Yeah. And it also kind of gives you that window into the the arrested development of some of us that, <laughs> you know, get caught in, you know, oh, I'm playing in a band. Oh, I love video games. Oh, I love comic books. Oh, I love, you know, it, whatever. It's, it's, it's that a, whole, I think I'm cool. It's, it's, right, it's, right. Fail, it's definitely a failed attempt. Absolutely. At absolutely cool. a failed attempt at being cool because let's be honest, Scott Pilgrim is not cool. <laughs> His friends around him are pretty cool. He is not. <laughs> even, even though, even though in the beginning of the book, you know, it's like, Rating, awesome. Oh, I know, I yeah. know, yeah. And that's I love that they give the ratings for the yeah. different people, like, you know, all of their stats and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so anyways, uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed talking about it. <laughs> uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, go out and check it out. Um, tell us your thoughts on, on the movie, on the on the game, on the, the soundtrack, on the books, whatever it is. You can get in touch with us at um, our new email address, which is Project Gen X pod at gmail.com. I will get through that one of these days. Um, you better make sure that's actually right. It is. It's Project just, Gen X yeah. pod at gov. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we we enjoyed rewatching and talking. Well, Dave enjoyed rewatching. I, I enjoyed, like, remembering watching it multiple times. And, um, um, yeah, check out Scott Pilgrim in any medium whatever it is because you're gonna it's it's a, it's a good time so. if, you, if you've never done it before watch the movie read the books immediately watch the movie again because you're gonna catch stuff yeah i agreed agreed so anyways i am alan smith i'm big dave and we will see you next time see ya